Welcome back. It is a sunny Saturday as we're doing this. And we are gonna be putting in some rutabagas. I have never grown rutabagas before. I usually draw the line at turnips. Rutabagas is a bridge too far. But we're gonna we're gonna climb on that bridge and grow a bunch of rutabagas because some friends of ours, not too far away, had a big harvest of them and they brought some over and shared with us. And they were grown conventionally. And I thought, man, these things are pretty good. I'm gonna grow them with all my micronutrients and stuff and see how they do. One of you guys said the other day, why don't you till in some alfalfa pellets? I said, you know, that's a very good idea. I actually used alfalfa pellets in one of our test beds this last year and it grew nice sweet vegetables. We also put it into a couple of the grocery row gardens and they seem to really appreciate it. Alfalfa has some compounds in it that along with the nitrogen seem to stimulate plant growth. It's just a little bit expensive. So I don't normally do it, but I want some really good growth in this area and these are not hyper improved bed areas. This is where we do our wider row gardens. And as you notice, I'm not just tilling. Normally, you know, I've been just taking the tractor and tilling, but I realized, you know, that's only going five or six inches tops. And for a root crop, I think they should go deeper. I would be much happier if I were a rutabaga, if I had 14 inches of loose soil instead of five inches. I mean, the root is gonna fill up almost all that loose space, the main root. And all those little feeder roots, they can go three feet, four feet, five feet, even six feet. It's incredible how far the root systems can go. But if they're stopped by hard ground underneath, even though this is sand, it's pretty compacted and hard. It used to be a lawn. And so this time I decided let's till in the alfalfa first and then each row, see I marked them out with my row markers. That's a foot, one row here, three feet to the next row, three feet to the next row. So I'm working along those lines and I'm gonna loosen just directly under and we will turn these into long, well loosened, hopefully fertile beds to put our rutabagas in. And maybe we'll grow some big fat sweet ones over the fall and winter. We shall see. And of course, since I'm doing this on YouTube, you shall see as well. It seems like I just put these in. They had yard long beans on them. We got our beans, we harvested some dried seeds and, uh, and now I'm pulling them out again. But I don't really have anything that's gonna be climbing through the winter. This is the time when all the short stuff grows. So I'm just gonna yank these out of here. This is my modular trellis design. It takes a single T-post. And we'll just yank it out along with what's left of these vines. Try not to pull my sweet potatoes out at the same time. Man, that one's in there tight. I might actually have to cut those things.
you guys have seen my Steve's mix before, Solomon's Gold from my friend Steve Solomon. We have this really, really bad soil here, so I like to add extra micronutrients. And when we did our taste tests, this very beginning of this year and the last year, we realized that the taste of the produce was so much better with the extra mineralization that even though it's a pain in the neck to do, we find it worth doing. And this is this is where we mix it right here. This is an old barn with kind of a beat up roof, but it's enough to keep the water off this area. And I have different amendments. I've got cottonseed meal, kelp meal, garden lime, azomite, green sand, magnesium sulfate, C90. Now I added a few extra things to the mix. This isn't just Steve's original mix. Like three of those things I just mentioned aren't in it. But then gypsum and I've got all my little micronutrients. And then the kids have this list that they leave out here so they can mix it. It's sort of, we do it with this scoop here and mix it according to, you know, how many quarts of this down to how many cups of this down to tablespoons and even teaspoons of some of the micro stuff like borax and sodium molybdate, but I really want nutrient dense food and I want the, the best food possible. So with soil that's as depleted as ours is, when it came back on the, the soil test and it was like, your soil contains nothing except aluminum and you don't really need that. Uh, we, we decided to just try to be as proactive and serious about our family's health and growing nutrient dense food. So as I'm making these beds, the Steve mix is going in there. So usually when you throw me, see me throwing dust around, it's either Steve's mix or it's ashes. And in this case, Solomon's gold. Yo, check it. T to the G. Back again on the one, two, three. Dick your bets like a boss. Not mind at the loss. Inherent in the system. Organic wisdom. Planting up a huge crew. Six beds full. True. Letting nature take its course. I've got the force. Smack the chemical farming in the face of file for divorce. Of course, I'm over planted for I'm standing. Yo, seeds, I'll plant ya. I'm the tropical Santa. So can't ya feel what I'm doing? Extension officer, I'm chair philosophers. Carboril is the drill. With fungicide to kill everything like a healthy suicide. No, we sort out. Sort the good genes from bad. So sad. Good lad, put the chem genie back, back in, in the bottle with full throttle like a freak. Now you might wonder, why am I planting these things so far apart? I mean, rutabagas only need like that much space, right? And, and here they are, at least three feet apart in these rows. Well, there is a reason. There is a method to my madness. Because the winter is the dry time of year for us, and the fall is generally a dry time of year. Drier, I mean, it's never super, super dry here for more than a few weeks usually. But this is, we're coming up on a dry time of year, and I want to utilize the soil moisture that's in the ground to keep my rutabagas happy. Because otherwise, I gotta come out here with a hose. You see this? I'm spraying them with a hose. For those who have said, what's your irrigation method? Here it is. Most of the time, I don't irrigate. Instead, I plant things wider. When you have plants that are competing for a piece of ground, the closer they are, the more roots in the ground, the more water is being pumped out of the ground and sent away into the atmosphere. So if I space these nice and wide, it's probable that other than the water that I'm giving them now to get them germinated, they may not need to be watered again all the way until harvest because they've got lots of space to pull from. When they come up in the rows, I'm gonna thin them to a foot apart in the rows, three feet between the rows, and unless it goes without rain for four weeks or so, they should be fine. I forked that ground deeply. Rain should penetrate. There's a good amount of fertility in here now because we put in alfalfa pellets and we put in Solomon's gold. I also had a cover crop through here before of beans and sorghum, so there's still some of those roots in the ground. And they should do just fine in here. 
I'm interested in survival gardening. And if you have more space and can spread things wider, it takes less maintenance to take care of the weeds and it takes less fertility and it takes less water. Now, I didn't come up with this on my own. I've been talking to Steve Solomon. You guys know Steve Solomon, my gardening mentor, as I call him. Steve Solomon wrote the book, Gardening When It Counts. He wrote the book, The Intelligent Gardener. He is a fantastically intelligent man. And he is going to be publishing a book with my publishing house, which I'm so excited about, Good Books Publishing. He is going to be republishing a book called Gardening Without Irrigation, or Waterwise Gardening. There is a public domain version that is out there that was originally intended for gardeners in Cascadia, so way up on the left coast. And this book, I asked him, I said, you know, this thing's gone out of print, can we reprint it? And he said, no. I will write a second edition and you could print that and we're going to cover the entire United States and we're going to talk about how to use water wisely in the garden, how to get through droughts, how to set up sprinklers, how to do it in a way that really makes sense. So I have read that and edited it and it's being proofread right now and illustrated and it should come out pretty soon here in the next couple of months. And the information that I read in it, I'm already incorporating. I had read the original book, but the expanded book is unbelievable. So if you're interested in that book, please sign up for my newsletter below this video. I will announce when that book comes out. And if you want to know when any of our other books are coming out too, sign up for the newsletter. And I'm just going to sit here and keep watering while you go sign up. Link below in, in the description. Waterwise Gardening. That's the book. When you see the announcement for Waterwise Gardening, uh, I mean, I'm psyched about it. I really, I, I read it. And one of our readers, a proofreader, wrote and said, I'm only 30 pages in and my mind is blown. And I, I felt the same way when I first read the original version. And then when I'm reading this expanded second edition, it's, yeah, it's really good. So anyhow, our rutabagas are going to be our fall calories in the ground crop. Hopefully we will have roots this winter. And when we get roots, I'll let you know how it goes and how this wide spacing works out for us and what we really have to do to make it happen. The cicadas are saying it's time for me to stop. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate you guys coming along as we work in the garden over what ended up being two days of gardening instead of just one. Um, but for you, it's probably an easy 20 minutes or less. And I, I highly recommend going out and digging and planting a fall garden if you can, if there are crops that you can overwinter. Having crops in the ground is cheap insurance. If you're worried about supply lines, if you are worried about um, the potential for food disappearing like toilet paper did last year. Ah, get some roots in the ground. It's cheap insurance. And at the very least, hopefully nothing goes wrong for any of us, but at the very least, you've got good homegrown organic food that you can eat from the garden through the winter. So, catch y'all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. I'm gonna make some biscuits, baby Gluten can't stop me I'm gonna dodge my taxes